When I uh, first started real estate, the first two years were very tough. I was so focused on getting my first sale. Everything I did just didn't work out until there was light at the end of the tunnel. And if real estate is what you want, you want to succeed, the sky's the limit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of More Than A Sale. We have one such individual, a successful entrepreneur and businessman. He owns Here's multiple restaurants. He's an avid real estate investor. He also owns a real estate brokerage, Ricky Sood. Ricky, welcome to More Than A Sale. Thank Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. When I started, I was only 23, You're too young. Somebody told me that you need gray hair to build credibility. I waited till I got the gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to start all over, how would you begin? I've jumped around brokerage to brokerage and everybody makes fake promises. They're all lies. Uh, if I were to start all over again and know what I know, I would probably start with Ron Sally, work with a good broker, take their advice, that uh, help you to take your career to the next level. You also have to understand that you have to put in the work. Just always stay on top and stay motivated. Right? And we have one such individual, Ricky Sood. Not only is he a dear friend, but more than anything, he's a successful entrepreneur and businessman. He owns multiple restaurants. He's an avid real estate investor. He also owns a real estate brokerage. And you may not know this about him, but he's a really, really funny guy and a really nice guy. Ricky, welcome to More Than A Sale. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Why don't you share with everybody that first interaction you and I had, we actually didn't know one another. We were connected on social media and a mutual friend put together a meeting and, and what was your first impression of meeting one another? First impression of you was, you know, look at this uh, guy suited and booted, comes in, uh, chitter chatting away. Once I got to hear you talk and just have a conversation, I was overwhelmed with your, you know, just your success and your story and how everything came about in your life and just having that conversation with you about our lives and how we came to where we are today in our lives, right? But it was it was fantastic. So the first time I met Ricky, you know, you see this guy, and if you watch his social media on Instagram, he's got all these nice cars. He has a Rolls Royce, and, you know, he's always wearing some nice flashy clothes. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to walk in, and I'm going to have a conversation with him. And you completely blew me away because what I had the impression of you of to versus what you actually were, you're one of the most humble individuals that I've ever met. And he's such a grounded individual. Once you get to know him, you really get that great understanding about Ricky I looked at Ricky and not many people know the story of the of the Rolls Royce so I looked at Ricky I said Ricky man that's a really nice car you're driving how's it drive on this Rolls Royce because I personally have never ever driven a Rolls Royce in my life and what do you do do you want to continue the next part of this sure I seen you like a little kid wow and you were staring at the car and I refused to let you look at it I wanted you to take the key drive it and uh, see for yourself what the Rolls Royce was about. I think once you drove in, I seen you driving, I seen a smile on your face. I knew something was coming, right? But why don't you continue on and tell us what happened after? So uh, we have a picture of this as well, me behind Ricky's car and Ricky took a selfie of both of us. And this sounds like a married couple kind of a story. <laughs> hey, why don't you continue next? <laughs> why don't I continue next all together? So we have a selfie of, uh, of Ricky and I, of me sitting behind Ricky's car. And um, that was the first time that I actually drove a Rolls Royce. And Ricky says, you should get one. I go, I don't know, man. This is a bit too flashy for me, this, that. And I gave myself a hundred reasons as to why I shouldn't get one. And Ricky's like, no, you listen, you should get one. Here's why. And so on and so forth. And we had a heart to heart conversation and flash forward a week later, a week later, uh, we're sitting down, we're having a conversation. I remember you're like, come to my house. And, uh, when he said, come to my house, I had a feeling something was cooking. I just didn't know what it was. I was secretly excited to come because I know it was a big purchase. I know you were in the market to get a car. I just didn't know what car. Boy, oh boy, was I surprised because <laughs> I found a brother from another brother, right? Uh, you followed instructions. You got the car. You know, it made me really happy because I want to see everybody around me winning and succeeding and taking things to the next level and not worrying about what people think uh, because you know what? We work hard and we deserve it, right? Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, where, where did you find success first in your life? What line of business was it? Was it through real estate that you found success? Was it through your chain of restaurants? Where was that first big fat paycheck that you ever earned? Well, it wasn't a fat paycheck, but uh, I actually got all the training that I needed from my parents. They were self-employed. 
They were in flea markets, and I kind of joined the hustle with them. Then I kind of realized, you know, I wanted to be in business. I wanted to do something involved a lot of money. And uh, for some reason, growing up, my, my dad's realtor always stuck in my head. And the only reason why he stuck in my head was every time he pulled up, he pulled up in a new Cadillac. Yeah. That kind of got me going. It had me thinking. At the time, I was working with my dad. I was working two jobs. Uh, I was doing telemarketing. I was a security guard. I wanted to be a cop. You know, some things don't pan out for certain reasons. And boy, am I glad I stuck to real estate. And it worked out for you. So what type of restaurants do you own right now? Can you share with the viewers? Uh, I have three franchises of Osmos mm -hmm. and uh, a brick-and-mortar location of THG Hot Chicken that we're uh, planning on blowing up. We are rolling out more locations. Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good once it's all said and done. Yeah, and you've been telling me that I gotta try this uh, this hot plate of chicken. It's like it's like no flavor like other. Oh, it's fire! Yeah, uh, and it's uh, run by a remarkable uh, guy, Chef Alim. Uh -huh. When once you get to meet him and hear about his story, you're gonna be wowed and you're gonna love the food. Even though I know you're a gym advocate <laughs> and uh, you probably won't eat fried food but uh, i think this one time is an exception you know I, th I think we're gonna have to make that exception tell me a part in your life that nothing is working out for me and most people sometimes maybe not i've had moments in my life where for very long period or a continuous period anything i would do just wouldn't work any move that I would make, a business decision that I would take, or any meeting that I would have, nothing would transpire into a success or a formulation. Was there ever a period like that in your life where you're like, anything I do, I just keep failing at, nothing seems to be working, you're just completely confused about what do I do now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I uh, first started real estate, uh, the first two years were very tough. I was so focused on getting my first client, getting my first sale. And everything I did just didn't work out. I did want to give up until there was light at the end of the tunnel. We had a, a mutual friend in our circle that needed to list their house. I actually had the opportunity to go in for an interview and I got my first listing. Wow. Uh, it was at a severe discount because I wanted the listing more than anything. And once I got it and I showed that I'm capable of doing this. Uh, then we got our second, our third, and kind of things started to trickle and we started to see things go in the direction that I wanted it to go in. But yeah, in the beginning, I wanted to quit. Uh, I didn't want to be a real estate agent. My dad would tell me that this isn't for you. You're too young. And when I started, I was only 23. I had somebody tell me that, you know, uh, you need gray hair to build credibility. I waited till I got the gray hairs, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now uh, I see. I I'm see. I'm starting what he to meant. see a few now. Yeah, you're starting <laughs> to see a few too, right? <laughs> and now, uh, after that comment was made, I see now as I was aging and uh, as things were going on, uh, how things transformed and how things got taken to the next level. You know, uh, it was very rewarding. I'm very thankful for everything. You know. You know, a lot of us. Anytime I have a conversation with someone, we've all had moments where we wanted to give up and we wanted to stop. And you mentioned that as well. And I kind of want to dive deep a little bit into it. How are you feeling at that point in time? Like when we when we actually feel like giving up or when we feel like, man, nothing is there. Like, like how, what's, how are you when you're feeling low? What's your mindset like? What are, you, what are you truly feeling at that point in time? Because nobody ever talks about this stuff. And I, wanna, and I wanna hear it from you, that what are you truly feeling at that point in time? Are you in bed all day? Are you kind of just slumped? Are you just down? Are you coming up with the next plan? Are you thinking of an alternative? Like, what are you truly feeling at that point in time? I feel beat. I feel uh, like the whole world is caving in on me. Uh, but there's this one quote, they say an empty mind is a devil's playground. I don't like to not have a plan and I don't like to not think of what I'm going to do next because the moment I stop thinking about what I'm going to do next, then that quote kicks into play, an empty mind is a devil's playground. That's where things that uh, unorthodox things happen. And uh, thank God I didn't have to go that route. It's a blessing in disguise, you know?
I really like that quote that you shared, Ricky. And keeping in line with some of these quotes that we have, and, and whenever you and I hang out, this is what we talk about. We talk about uh, things that kind of motivate us, things that get us going, and things that kind of give us the passion or fuel. What motivates Ricky Sood? What motivates me? Great question. Definitely my family, my mother and father, uh, seeing their struggles and seeing them work so hard for us and giving us everything that we've needed and walking us through this path of life. My motivation is to make them proud. Just keep it going and surprise them every day, you know, whether it be a car or a new investment or a new business, just to keep them going because I am their lifeline and vice versa, you know. So that's what keeps me motivated. And was there a point where you developed that kind of relationship where your parents were the fuel for you? Or is it why, why that level of motivation? Was there, was there, is there some, something that happened in the middle where your attachment to them grew, where you're like, I, have to, I really want to do this for my family more than anything else altogether? Like there was times where, uh, you know, we'd seen fancy cars or we see expensive things and... Uh, my dad would kind of give us a slap on the wrist, you know, he's like, when you look up and you spit, the spit falls on your face. So it came down to, uh, you know, uh, me feeling that uh, I was looking up all the time. And uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was young, I was five, six years old, I actually spat. And the spot did fall on my face. <laughs> uh, so he wasn't kidding about that. But, you know... The things that we couldn't have and the things that he thought we couldn't have and the things that he wanted and he thought he couldn't have. Thankfully, you know, uh, teaching him the ropes and having him invest in real estate and me investing, we overcame a, a hurdle for generations. And uh, I think out of my brother, my dad has nine siblings. All of his siblings were, you know, I'm not going to say the most successful, but we're well off, you know, and with their blessings, hopefully we do better and better in life, you know? That when we were talking about blessings and we were talking about all the great ways that the universe rewards us, and there's a secret of yours that you shared with me uh, that I think I want to share with everybody else. When you told me this, I was like, whoa, because I've never heard anyone ever do something like this. And, and it completely, that's when you won me over as an individual when I heard that story. And it came straight from the heart. And if you may, and if you allow me, I'd like to share it with the rest of the world. What Ricky does, in the first of every month, Ricky goes to the bank and he withdraws uh, $1,000. $1,000. And what he does then is he goes in his car and he drives down to Toronto or any city where or any place where there's general individuals who are begging for food or money or resources or the less fortunate, if we may say. He does not pull out a camera. He does not pull out his phone. He does not do anything. He goes and he has a conversation with these individuals and he says hello to them and he hands out money whether it's $20, whether it's $50, and even $100, depending on the point in time. Am I right? Am I, is this? I go with $500 in 20s and $500 in 50s. Let's, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, that's so. the denomination that I walk in with. But okay. yeah, I do do that. It's a, it's a great, rewarding feeling. Yeah. You always have to give back because if uh, nobody's watching, God is watching. And with that being said, whatever the individual does with the funds is none of my business. It's none of my concern. A lot of people kind of hate on me for doing this because, you know, they say, oh, he's going to do drugs, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. And I've shared with you, it's really not my concern because that's his food. That's what he survives on and that's what kind of keeps him going or her going. So it feels good and, you know, anytime they say God bless you or, you know, thank you, it's a rewarding feeling, and I encourage everybody around me to do it. And then the funny part is he actually has a regular customer that fails to recognize Ricky because he just knows <laughs> Ricky is going to be coming the first of the month. So there's been one individual that ropes around for based on what you're telling me. And Ricky's like, you keep coming every single time, every single month because he knows he's going to get <laughs> And you know what? I look forward to meeting him every time, right? yeah. whether he remembers me or not, but I remember him. And uh, I want to see him every week because I know he's safe, he's good, and, uh, you know, he's blessed. What was one of the worst real estate deals that you've ever done? You're like, this deal is just getting worse and worse. It's a freaking nightmare. 
Oh God, uh, I had a, a few deals where the where towards the end the client maybe not submit a T4 or a NOA or an important document and they think they have all the time in the world. They come to realize that you know closings around the corner, and with that being said, you know we're we're kind of on a time crunch and we're not able to uh, meet the closing date, and I can't. I don't want to share this information with the other agent until I officially know that it's going to go through or not. There's been times where the deals trickled on to the point of final day of closing and then the lawyers have to share the bad news that we have to get an extension and then a second extension and then a third one and with further deposits. Uh, so those, those are some of the deals from hell that I've seen. But uh, thank God, knock on wood, um, every deal has completed and succeeded. That's, that's incredible. Ricky, knowing what you know now, with all the years of failures, successes, things, if you had to start all over, what would you do and how would you begin? This might be a corny answer, but uh, I wouldn't change nothing. Just because I'm so happy and rewarded that I, ha I had the opportunity to walk through all these paths of life, see the struggles, Nothing was handed to me. I had to work for it. And that's what I appreciate, you know? Now, let me, let me rephrase the question a little bit more. Knowing what you know now, what would you tell yourself 15 years ago? Knowing all the things that you know now, what would you do differently or what would you tell your younger self? I would definitely choose a, a bigger brand um, just because uh, they do Before work. your real estate brokerage. If I were to start all over again and know what I know, um, I would probably uh, start with Ron Sally. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, unfortunately, you weren't around at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that being said, uh, work with a brand, work with uh, individuals that are energetic, motivated, that help you take things to the next level, people who care. And I've noticed that I've jumped around brokerage to brokerage and everybody makes fake promises. And I bought into all of them. And I signed up uh, with, with every brokerage that sold me the story. And I transitioned from brokerage to brokerage, realizing that uh, all the commitments and promises that brokers made, uh, they're all lies. You know, they don't care. We're just a number. At least that's how I feel, right? But uh, I would definitely choose uh, appropriate brokerage, work with a good broker, you know, have, take their advice, take their expertise to and take their knowledge to kind of help you to take your career to the next level. And uh, you also have to understand that you have to put in the work. It doesn't happen. It's not a magic show where clients just start to come in and we start feeding leads to people. Uh, even giving a lead to somebody, it's you have to give it to the right person because the last thing you want is for it to uh, not transpire into a transaction or it goes to waste. So all of those things, right? Personally, I'm good. I, I enjoyed the ride. I enjoyed uh, dealing with the people I dealt with, the brokerages that I changed, uh, only because I got to learn and I can share this experience with other people now. So if you were to share an experience with a, let's say, a rookie or someone new entering the business, or even if you were to advise another real estate agent, what would that roadmap look like for that individual? Uh, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you go into tunnel vision and you focus, and if uh, real estate is what you want and you want to succeed, it's definitely possible, even with the immense amount of competition that we have. I think it all comes down to your motivation as an individual. And as long as you're motivated, the sky's the limit. And hypothetically speaking, if real estate wasn't the journey for you, what would your line of work look like? I wanted to be a cop. Okay. So uh, I'd probably be uh, driving around in a Ford Explorer. Okay. Um, uh, pulling people over. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, along the way of life, I kind of disconnected mm -hmm. for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I would have wanted to be a cop. So moving forward, I want to ask you, Ricky, what does success look like to you? What does success mean to you? Everybody around me be successful. We should all be eating off the same plate. We should all be driving the same cars. We should all be winning in life, you know? As a community. As a community, correct.
And that's that's what success to you is when everybody as a community is is doing well in their life. Of course. What good is it if you or me or anybody is doing well? That's just our own success story. What about the people around you? What about the people watching you? What about, you know, everything that's around us? So just just always stay on top and stay motivated, right? Who's a who's a mentor for you or a role model for you that you are inspired by or you get motivated from? And it doesn't have to be one, it could be a few people. Various real estate agents, uh, parents, family, uh, siblings, uh, people with good energy around me, uh, all, all kinds of people, you know. What's a life lesson that you have gained or achieved based on your current understanding of the world, where you are in your, uh, where, are you, where you are in your life? What's a life lesson that resonates with you? I would say that there's been many lessons in life, but just being myself, being honest, being loyal, never, you know, in our business, I think agents are always about just, uh, you know, completing a transaction and making a sale and getting a paycheck. But uh, there's more than that to it, right? You got to put your own feelings, your own emotions into it, and you got to give the right advice. And whether it takes a day longer, 10 days longer, a year longer, just take that time uh, because people are going to appreciate that more and uh, you're going to get tons of referrals, you're going to succeed, uh, the good word is going to spread and in no time you're going to be a, a success story, right? Incredible. And in, in a lot of the business transactions that you've been a part of and the negotiations that you've done, what are some of your pet peeves that you encountered when dealing with certain individuals that kind of irked you or you're like, I don't know why you got to do this or why does this have to take place or what are some of those pet peeves look like for you? Or uh, even in agents in general that you've encountered that you had to, you know, do a deal with and you're on the other end of the deal. You know, when I have a listing and I know it's a hot listing and there's going to be tons of showings, there's going to be tons of activity, there's going to be offers. Um, I always have those agents when it's five or ten offers. The agents that are, uh, unfortunately, they're the lowest on the list, uh, but they're flexing, you know. <laughs> and they're trying to uh, figure out, you know, what price we got, whatever the case is. But obviously, you know, I can't disclose all that information. But the attitude and the rudeness sometimes I get and the arrogance um that i get it, it's overwhelming right and uh, that is a pet peeve i don't like dealing with people in a situation where i have to be fair with everybody and the only way to be fair is i got to keep my mouth shut and uh, everybody seems to think that because we're realtors and we're from the same community we're able to be, become friends at that moment and uh, help them and guide them but i'm not realizing there's four or five or six people in the background that also are fighting for this house and uh, may the best winner win. And uh, some people just don't get that. I totally hear you. And even for me, there's some, sometimes there's certain dialogues that I don't like that every time I hear this dialogue, it kind of irks me a little bit. And one of them is, I don't want to waste your time. We're negotiating over here. We're having a deal. We're speaking about a transaction. This is your job. There's no time wasting. It's my job. You're not going to be wasting my time because it is my job to provide you with whatever answers I can provide you with at that point in time. You should have told him time is money. Yeah, time is, <laughs> yeah, time is money, right? Every, every second, I don't want to waste your time, but listen, are you gonna you know it, it just it's one of those dialogues that just kind of i don't like it because yeah. it makes no sense to me yeah, yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah, it's yeah. your job to be able to be calling to be having the conversation to be doing those things all together so that's one of the and then the arrogance and the rudeness there's no reason to be arrogant or rude to anybody especially in this business everybody sure you have five deals more than the other agent or this other agent has seven deals and you know what one agent told me long time ago we were having a very friendly conversation this kind of stuck with me he, basically he was on the cooperating side and i was on the listing side and it was a very hot listing i had and i was really young and he was a seasoned agent and he goes look i really want to work with you just remember i also do a lot of listings and he said that to me and basically what he was saying was that 
He's strong, just because strong arming you. Well, not only is he strong arming me, but he was really nice and kind about it. He goes, we have to work in the same industry. There's going to be moments where I also have a hot listing. And there's going to be moments where I also have a property that has 20 offers or 15 offers or 10 offers or five offers. You know, and obviously in this industry, we all know that, you know, as realtors, you got to be as fair as possible because that's that's part of the RICO code of ethics and be as fair as possible and everybody get a fair chance. But what that means at the same time is not being arrogant, not being rude, not having an upper hand over somebody for that point in time. Because technically as a listing agent, when you have multiple offers, you do have a little bit of an upper hand of and course. you can show someone kindness or you can tell somebody to F off. In a way. And that's when your true character sort of comes out when you're dealing with that transaction. And the and, and the agents that even now that people you you as a listing agent should be that one agent that is truly loved and liked, where people want to show your properties, where people want to show your homes. And I bet you right now anybody that is watching and they see an agent's or a particular agent's name on a listing and they're like, Oh, not this guy again, <laughs> or not this lady again, or goddamn, I gotta show this person's house again. And it's not a moment of happiness, and you know that the deal is not going to be smooth or it's not going to go the way that you want it closing off on this ricky i uh, you know this was uh, this was a great session that where you and i got a chance to share you know our thoughts and opinions and for uh, for the audience to really learn about you if somebody was to ever run, meet you know meet you on the street or catch up with you or randomly see you what's one thing or two things that you'd want them to know about you i would definitely want them to know that everything that i've done i've worked my ass off for it uh, nothing was a hand down. I've gone in the straight path. I've never looked left, never looked right. There's all sorts of ways of coming up in life. I've decided to take the right path and elevate myself and motivate the people around me. And it's not easy, you know. And aside from that, uh, another thing that I would want people to know is that I'm a very loyal person. I don't trash talk. I don't talk behind people's back. Um, sure, we laugh, we giggle about certain topics, uh, but that's something that everybody does, right? Uh, but I'm in no position to talk doo-doo about somebody or bring people down. Uh, if anything, I'm that guy that will help you and guide you and try to elevate you and make you feel good at the end of the day. That's remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Another stellar episode of More Than a Sale. Stay tuned for the next episode as we dive deep into the journey behind the business of real estate and what got these individuals to where they are today with all the adversities they face. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ron Sally, host of More Than a Sale. I'd like to give a big shout out to Vision Room Studios located in Brampton at 12 Automatic Road for your photo shoot needs, video needs, event space, anything for content shoots. Make sure to reach out with them and connect with them anytime you're planning to do so.